Okay, how about you? Good. Oops, Scott here and it got really quiet. <laughs> I, know. I don't know what it is. It will need to behave. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. All right, very good. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Here. Leo. Here. Stanton. Here. Chester. Here. Dean. Here. Lewis. Here. All right. Uh, any agenda, agenda changes before we get started? All right. With that, we're going to turn it over to our guest speakers, and I might just turn it over to the manager to start us off with Yeah. It. Happy to introduce the, uh, the Cub Scout troop from Saugatuck. Um, I had the complete pleasure of meeting with this troop, uh, I think it was a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Um, and they had reached out to me because one of their assignments is to meet a leader in the community or something like that. And so I was very fortunate to be reached out to. And I gave the Cub Scouts two assignments to walk in with. I'm gonna take this mask off so yeah. people can hear me at home. Two assignments to walk in with. Uh, one was, can they come up with a design for our bean bag toss boards that we have in Wicks Park? Cause we're gonna send those boards over to the high school so they can paint them or the middle school art, art class. <clears throat> so we wanted to see what kind of designs they could come up with. The other assignment was a much more broad assignment, which was, can you come up with some park amenities um, either at Oval Beach or Mount Baldhead, some improvements for the park parks that they would like to see. So they came in and these gentlemen <laughs> are beyond their years. They super impressed me uh, with their knowledge of Saga Talk, uh, their design concepts, but, so, but they're also very curious about did Saga Talk have full insurance coverage? Uh, <laughs> did we talk to the attorneys about some? Could we talk to the attorneys about some of these things? And could we come up with some bond issuances oh, to fund some of these things? And I'm like, well, when I was your age, I was just playing Nintendo and just like that. <laughs> that was it. Um, so, anyways, we Garnett, Mayor, the mayor and I talked about it, and we wanted you all to come back and present to the rest of the city because. You're awesome. So that's where yeah. we're at. All right. Very good. So what do you got planned there? Do you, I know you've got some things you want to share with us. So, yeah. so maybe maybe some introductions. Yeah, there you go. All right. Should we start with the um, formal? Oh. Who had the first idea there? You want to All right. Ah. This is Simon Carr, a fifth grader. Hi. So um, for the cornhole, I thought maybe we could have like a sunset or like a beach scene, mm -hmm. but also um, some of us thought that maybe we should have like the Trailblazer logo. Okay. Very good. That'd be great. All right. Right. Who has another idea? There you go. Oh, this, this is Joey Bollinger. He is a fourth grader. So. <laughs> uh, for my idea, I thought we should have the Trailblazers logo on it, and the sun in the logo could be the hole that you try to get your beanbag through. Nice. Right, I like nice. it. Yeah. That's Got on the screen. We pull that up on the screen All so right. you can see it at home. This is Brady Palmer, also a fifth grader. Uh, I was even thinking the, the Saga Tuck S or the Trailblazers logo. Okay. And maybe the, I think I was on the call when Simon said the, the hole should be a, a sun. Got it. Very good. Thank you. Christopher, was the fifth idea yours? All right. Well, we also, when we were brainstorming, had the idea of making Mount Baldy on the, on the yeah. board. That's a great idea, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and now who wants to start with talking about their ideas for the parks? All right, this is Christopher. He is also a fifth grader. I was thinking for the um the playground at Oval Beach, where there's a swing set and concessions. Maybe we could add something like a pass, like more playground equipment. Maybe a seesaw. Okay. Something like that. All right. Very good. This is Lincoln Hardy, a fifth grader. Um, for the, I thought we could add a park and maybe some like canoe and kayak rentals at the beach. Okay. Uh, mine is kind of like Lincoln, just rental equipment like kayaks, paddle boards, boogie boards, and things like that. Maybe a life vest, too. Okay. Um, so I thought maybe we should have like a zip line going down from the top of Mount Bald Head to the bottom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is what Lexi talks yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for my Oval Beach and Mount Baldhead project, I thought we could have a um, some signs going up Mount Baldhead on the little platforms about the history of Mount Baldhead. Mm -hmm. And um, at Oval Beach, we could do some facts about Lake, Lake Michigan. Very good. All right. Nice. All right. Anybody else have any other things? Questions. Go Simon, ahead, Council. Simon, I, I noticed that you suggested, in addition to a zip line, a merry go round. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a sweet idea. Mm -hmm. Good imagination. I like it. And then just for clarification, was it a zip line from the Bald Head Tower to Lake Michigan or to the river? Or both? <laughs> Ooh. Hey, okay. Wow. Go. <laughs> Mr. Gardner, going in. Well, welcome, boys. Uh, glad that you're here. Um, and thanks for the ideas. As soon as I read this, I said, you know, Simon says, for those of you that remember the game, <laughs> Yeah. I'd like to be appointed to the Kids Parks Advisory Council, which we don't yet have, have yet have, but I think this is a great opportunity to tap into your knowledge and your experience and your skills here and actually just have some fun with this. So um, might be something we'll be thinking about. So Simon, you put your name on the documents and you get nominated for things. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, parks are important to us. So. <laughs> so, very much so. Thank you. Very good. Good. All right. Other questions from council? We really appreciate you all doing this. Thanks for, I, I was really excited when Ryan said, or the manager sent the photos of you all here because I was most intrigued where everybody sat. I know there was a little bit of a battle for where you sat, right? Yeah, yes, you remember Simon, where? Simon enjoyed the gavel. Ah, very good. Yeah, it, it can be kind of fun, can't it? Yeah. <laughs> very good. All right, thank, thank you. Hopefully we'll see you again. All right. Thank you. All right. Very good. Okay. With this, we're to the public comment portion on the agenda. Uh, we welcome anybody who's in the audience, either here in the room or on Zoom. If you'd like to submit your public comment, please limit your comments to three minutes. Introduce yourself and that's it. Who do we have? Public comment on any agenda item. Yes. Aaron Byler with the Pinnacle Construction Group. Okay. Um, there you go. Everybody here? There you go. So I am the project manager on the Butler next door, okay. and I put on the or I requested on the agenda today to uh, propose a temporary road agreement across the park from the Butler into the Yacht Club parking. Um, what's led me to that is we've got into the dewatering of the low grade footings in the project and the water table was up higher than what we thought was soil borings. So our dewatering loop is actually cutting off a lot of our site access. So we've only got about a truck width coming into the site. Um, I think it's like page five on that 
Yeah, if, I, if you will, why don't we, because this is our first um, agenda item, which we really wanted to get into some discussion on. Okay. So I didn't want you to be held to just three minutes. So oh, we sure. can actually have a pretty good discussion about it. Yeah, So if you want to hold that thought, yeah, and then we'll, we'll come back to it. All right. All I have. Oh, well, yeah, just hold that thought. <laughs> Anybody else on, on the line, Jamie, that would like to contribute public comment? Christine's waving her hand. All right. Hi, Christine. Hi. Can Hi guys, how is everyone? Good. Good. Um, so I know that we're voting on Monday for the outdoor expanded dining. I did notice that in the fee structure, it's the whole fee is due at the time of the application. Mm -hmm. So that's in April. Yeah. So I would, it would be a big chunk of money to pay in April go, going into the summer. Okay. So I don't know how others people, you know, I, I mean, I can only speak for myself. I mean, obviously I'll sell a kidney to get my spots, but <laughs> in the same sense, in the same sense, I don't know if there could be like a percentage and then we pay a percent. Do you know what I mean? Cause I always just envisioned it would be like a, a monthly rental kind of uh, fee structure. So I was just a little shocked that it would be um, all due up front. Okay. So that's all I have to say about all of that. So that's it. Thank okay. you. All right. Very good. Thank you. Anybody Thank else? you. All right. Steve. Hi, my name is Steve Thomas from uh, Stogie Cigar Shop. I was just uh, wondering what was the fee? Because I guess I missed that from the last Zoom meeting. What was the fee? Yes, for I'm sorry for the uh, pop up patios that Christine was just uh, referring to. Mm -hmm. It's in the packet. It's two hundred dollars as parking space per month. Per, per month. month. Per month, and that would be April first after you guys uh, talk about that on Monday and vote on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's all I had. All right. Thank you. Others. Nope. All right. Very good. With that, we'll move on and then we'll be able to. So our first item is the Butler request for temporary road. Mr. Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we received a request from the Butler Construction Group with their outdoor patio to utilize uh, a portion of the park to bring in their equipment. Um, and we've included some, some of the material that they had sent us via email. Uh, when I received the request, uh, I did send them an email and had a, a conversation with them that I had some concerns with their, with their ask. Um, and I told them that I was a no um, and, I, and explained why. Uh, but I also said that you can come to the council because I'm not the end all be all, you know, just the manager guy. Um, and so the list of the concerns that I had expressed to them, just so you all know, is that uh, one, we, we should have a construction schedule we really don't know how far into the season they're gonna go, if they're gonna be driving heavy equipment across the park. Um, certainly that could lead to a few concerns, one being uh, turf deterioration. Uh, the other big concern, and I've heard this from the tree board, um, is brute compaction of the, of the willow tree in the park, the beloved tree. Um, also just general aesthetics, because they had mentioned uh, about putting up fencing, uh, for some of the uh, the platforms are going to put on the ground. I forget Dura base, base that they would put on the ground. Um, so it's a small park, and you know there's already heavy construction going on, um, and so aesthetics are always a concern. Um, and then just kind of the general approval process for the project, right? Staging and logistics. This would have been. I, I know you you run into issues all the time, but um, staging of construction equipment is something I had reached out uh, previously about and really hadn't received a, a good answer on where they were gonna stage their construction equipment and materials. Um, and then of course, this is gonna call, uh, cause, potentially cause um, some issues as far as staff doing some administrative work and as far as entering in some, into agreements as far as any property damage that they cause. So that's gonna you know, just be a, an extra workload for, for city staff. Um, and then just kind of in general, only being here for one year, I know there's a lot of sensitivities to all parks, but this park in particular, I mean, we had a discussion about just putting up a historical sign 
and how many, you know, how many concerns came up with just like a three by three historical sign. And I explained that to the, the construction crew that there's just generally, generally a lot of sensitivities and I'm a no, but they can come into city council and make their ask and a presentation. So here they are. All right. Very good. Now. Great. Thanks for the detail on that. I appreciate the background. Um, but yeah, I started to say the request is to put that temporary road using DuraBase, which is a, a poly product, which is made of plastic. It's four and a half inches thick and it's made for temporary road construction. And basically it's made to protect whatever's beneath it. Um, I've used this product on a couple other projects where we had soft soil or where we were trying to protect some things and it works well. Um, so the proposal would be to create a 20 foot wide easement, temporary access easement through that park. And I have a agreement that I've done on other projects that I could present for you to review and we could sign before we begin any of the installation in the park, but um, that's kind of the route that I was hoping to accomplish. It gets us from the site over to the parking area at the Yacht Club. Um, it kind of accomplishes two things. One, it gives us access into the, the actual structural portion of the patio while we're working on the water main, because there's a water main that has to go out to Butler and once we get into that, it basically cuts off all access. So this would allow us to continue to be moving on that building project while we're working on the water main out to the road, which will help our schedule overall. Um, we've got a hard drop dead date with the Butler Pinnacle Construction does of May 15th for turnover. So uh, they wanna get this thing open by May 15th to get staffing hired and get everything in the works before busy season comes. So that's what we're working towards. There's a few pictures you can see there. That's one of them laid out, but it's actually a 14 foot wide panel by I think it's four feet deep and they all interlock and there's a twist lock between each panel that keeps them from separating and moving. And then they just float right on top of the ground there. And once we're done, you come through with a small excavator and just pull them up with those key locks. And they basically just pull right off. You back yourself out. There won't be any tracks or any compaction to the soil other than what the mat weighs. And in the previous projects that I've done, we haven't disturbed any of the ground, but as part of that, easement right up that I put together it says in there pinnacle would be responsible for any damages or any replacement that would need to happen um, all the costs of being covered by pinnacle and red water so it's really just trying to find a happy medium for us to keep going on the site and I know that that park is sacred to Saugatuck and we're just the general contractors coming into town so I'm just trying to open the discussion and come up with a solution where we can kind of all work together. Um, a second option, if if the park is totally off limits, is the property line between the Butler and the the small park here in the corner. It's kind of split right there between those those two. Um, that green space there is split in half, so. If this wouldn't be an option, a second alternative would basically just be able to allow us to get on the other side of that, that fencing area. So this is the property line. Mm -hmm. Our access is here. This is Saugatuck property. So our fence is there. We can't access that. But if we could get through there, it would allow us to work on this water main while we could still get over to the site. So that's kind of the second choice if if this would be totally off limits. Okay. All right. Questions? Uh, 
Yeah. Yes. Um, so um, I understand, you know, the water table's higher, and I appreciate that you guys are very serious to um, address all of the issues that you have uh, with plumbing and, and um, making the improvements. Um, I have a few questions. One is, what is your timetable for this temporary easement? That's my first question. So in a perfect world, it would be through project duration, but in if that's not an option, our our shortest time frame would be four to six weeks to get that water main installed. Okay, so preferably through May 15th, but at the at the least four to six weeks. Yeah. Okay. I'd say four is doable if we have that access. Okay. And which, um, which would be then March 31st into March if you started right away. Uh, yeah, we've got all of our permits in hand. I'd have to check on material to see if they could get going next week, but we'd probably start first of March. So it'd be through the month of March. All right, continue. And then Holly. would you um, uh, consider a bond or an escrow for damages to the park? Yeah. yeah, we do that all the time. Okay. And we can do that in the form of a check, depending on the amount, or we can get an actual bond put in place with a bond company. Okay. Okay. That's um, it. Thank you. Just a, Jen, Ken, did you want to ask another question? Did you have a question? No, I didn't. I'm sorry oh, to interrupt. Mayor, if I, I may. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Uh, just to build on Holly's question, um, it sounds like um, you've got the um, materials sort of at the ready there's a lot of issues with the supply chain at the moment uh you know things like mains and things of that nature do you have everything you need for the project or as far as the building itself well no for the for, for the bit for the bit while you're while you're gonna need this road in place you did everything to get that done within within that time frame that that, that holly's uh yes okay. so the dura base mats are a rental product yeah and they've got those in the yard we could get those within a week all of my steel for the building itself i've gone through shop drawings already and that's into the shop being fabbed okay um we're working on helical piers right now they're supposed to have those done in about a week which is our starting point and then we'll start building foundations beyond that but okay lead times i've checked all that and not having any issues with it so okay i think we'll be good okay and that's a hard question i've been being asked by Butler too, because I mean it's a it's important for them to get it done as well. So, go okay. ahead, Lauren. So, um, just looking at Ryan's concerns, I guess um, staying away from the tree, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what can be done that they can get this project going? If if you're not staging there, you're going to have to stage where you're going to put all your equipment if it's not in the yacht club's parking lot. Um. We've we've discussed placing some things down at the end of Butler. We didn't want to stockpile the dirt just because of the overall size of it. So that's why we have been running it to the parking lot. Yeah. But we have talked about staging re-steel and steel down on that end. But as far as I know, putting stuff in that yacht club parking lot was okay. So that's where we've been doing it. But if it's an issue, we can we can change it if that needs to happen. And then as far as fencing, was there supposed to be some sort of fencing around the actual uh, you know, driveway material? If we, system? if we do install that Dura-Base system, I'm gonna put the same temporary fencing that we have around the site on each side of the Dura-Base road. Yeah. So that if a contractor pulls in there and doesn't know that there's a mat down there and decides he wants to drive off into the, the park you know because it's green space thinks it's a parking lot that's why we'll put that that fence up on each side of it to prevent people from doing that so just kind of it closes it to the area we're working and as far as the tree i've drawn that line as far to the uh, close to the road as possible i mean if we can get closer than that we'll do that i've I agree. I want to stay as far away from that tree as possible, but with these mats, I don't, there's no root damage 
that should happen because that they're made for that compression. It's a 600 pound per inch that these things can take. I mean, there's pictures of giant submarines being hauled in on them. So I have no concern with protecting that ground with these. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Byler, thank you for coming to see us today. Um, I'm Russ Gardner, City Council. Um, um, the information that you provided was extremely helpful. It helps me understand how you're going to propose to protect the park. And you're right, that park, I don't know if I'd use the word sacred, but <laughs> about as close as we get here in yeah. Saugatuck. And um, so a couple of things, and I completely agree with uh, the city manager's approach on this in terms of questions. I would have exactly the same questions and did after reading this. You did answer a couple of them in terms of, in terms of the duration and so forth. Um, would definitely like to see a draft agreement in terms of what this is going to mean for the city in terms of your responsibility, yep. as well as what the city is going to receive and our citizens, more importantly, are going to receive from the use of their land for a private enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, so I think more importantly, though, this is not something I think to be entered into quickly, but I sense you've got some urgency around this from a, from a project standpoint. So let's say that it was a no. What's the, what, what, what's your plan C mm -hmm. if there's a no? So if it's a no, it's gonna shut down our schedule on the building if we have to put the water main in without, because we have no access while we're putting that water main in. So I would have to find the spot in the schedule that makes the most sense to cut off access. And then we would cut off that site try to do as much as we can on the building, get all of our material in there and work on it as we can. But it's gonna make the overall schedule probably push out, I would say, and make it more difficult. Thank you. And I'm not speaking on behalf of council at all. I'm just imagining yep. what our thought process is going to be here. Yep. Um, I don't recall having had a, an ask of this type in my memory. So this is all new for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to be thoughtful and considerate, and more importantly, respect the residents of our town that use this park even in wintertime. So I appreciate being here and you've answered a few questions that I had, and I look forward to seeing some additional information regarding how we can maybe get into an agreement on this. And, and I do have that draft agreement. Um, I can forward it to you, Ryan, or? Sure, yeah. Okay. yeah. Perfect. Just Scott, yeah, just one more. Just one, so we're all on the same page. I'm just looking at the. Uh, is your alternative position possibly coming off of water, kind of just straight down in this direction, or is it coming off of Butler in this direction? And, and do you have any estimate on what that distance would be compared to the 200 feet we're talking about? So here? their plan B? Plan, your plan B, I guess, yeah. Well, plan B would actually be going, it's directly on the opposite side of our fence. Can I step up there? Please, yeah. I'm trying to just the step steps. up to the window and point out the window. <laughs> right there. So we have a laser pointer. Yeah. 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 Aaron, oh, we have a laser pointer. Nice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, mm -hmm. we are accessing right up along that sidewalk. Right okay. Yep. Yeah. The property line splits this green space right here. So this between Mm -hmm. The four yard fence and our fence is the yeah. state property. Okay. So if this is an option, then we could continue to get by if we could get this access okay. on that piece of ground. Right. And what's, yeah, what's, then while we're working on this water main, yep. we can basically drive around it on the city property. I see. And what's yeah. that distance? That's Scott's question. What is uh, that distance? I mean, it's obviously not as long. 200, right? 200, I believe, 207 I saw. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's about almost a third. Um, okay. The only downfall to this version is it keeps us on this road here. Right. So that's kind of why I was looking for this, but yes, that, that would solve the issue. Okay. Okay. We're just so tight there. Yeah, yeah. If we can get on the other side of the fence, then it allows us to get around that. So, 
Yeah, so if plan A and plan B do not work, then you're basically on hold on installing the water main until the project is done and you remove the fence. So it sounds like the fence, the temporary fence that you've put up is what is halting your progress right now. Well, it's the width there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the width from the property, because that fence is on the property line. Got so it. it's the width from the property line to the sidewalk. Once we start digging a trench in there for the water main with the soils that we have, you yeah. have to you have to offset the grade so it doesn't collapse. Then when you're doing water main, you have to get pretty deep. Yeah. So it's just that width from the property line to the existing sidewalk, which has snow melt in it. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough width there to do both. So yeah, we would either finish the building, put the water main in then, or I'll look at the schedule and try to find the best spot to stage everything and get okay. it in there. Holly, go ahead. Uh, is there a precedent for doing this? I've Have we uh, yeah, I would say that. shut down right, a right. park or a private business no. or right. construction that any of us know of? Mm. Not that we're aware. No. no. Okay. Any other questions um, from council? Yeah, go ahead. I mean, uh, so your alternative uh, plan B includes moving your equipment across that road. What are these like really heavy weighty trucks that are gonna be moving or what? Um, it's the loader mm -hmm. that they've been running the dirt that's in the parking lot now. That's the biggest piece of equipment that's gonna be running through there. But I mean, oh, it's, or a, on the road. it's a big size loader, yeah. It's bigger than that back. It's that one top right, mm -hmm. about that size. Uh, yeah, Madam Mayor, if yep. I may. Yes. Um, so how are you guys getting the equipment in currently? And how would that change things going forward with the project, right? You guys are pretty much going right in front of the butler, right? I mean, I <laughs> yep. see it all day, every day. So well, why couldn't you use that access point? for the going forward? We can continue to use it until we have to start installing the water main because the water main runs directly through that path. Okay. So we can keep using it. It's just finding that point where we can install the water main while we continue to move on the building. That's where this would help. And we can get into some of the construction details, but a four to six window to put that water main, it seems like quite, quite a lengthy period of time to, to slap that in. Mm -hmm. what, why, why, why the length of time is, I mean, you're, you're a construction expert, I'm not, but. Yeah, I mean, like I said, four weeks is probably likely, but there's, there's steps. You gotta get your water main in, there's chlorination tests that need to happen. There's, you have to put a riser into the sidewalk that needs to be tested. There's just a lot of steps you have to get through in order to, get that in so a water main install usually doesn't happen less than three to four weeks so thank you yeah. and all this was because the water table is so that's what's driven us to this and yes. in normal cases what would you do without a water table like this well if the water table was where we thought it was with the soil borings mm -hmm. our 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 trench that we've dug mm -hmm. for our water, we have a dewatering system set up, a bunch of little pipes that go down in the ground. So that trench actually comes across and over and cuts off a lot of that access. So if that water table was up, it wouldn't be cutting off a lot of the access that we have now. And you didn't, you didn't realize that the water table is high? before you started the construction project? Came out a week before we started construction and started digging just to check the water table. And that's when we found out it was a little bit higher. It's about a foot and a half higher than what we assumed. So you, you did know about this before you started construction? Well, we checked the test hole and then that's when I sent Ryan that email starting this conversation. And then, okay. So, so, yeah, yeah, just to be clear. So it's, yeah. the, it's the dewatering trench. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the whammy here. It's not the, the water main because you always knew that was going to have to go in. So it's the trench that's actually causing you to have to change the construction plans for access. Cause the water main was always going to have to go in. Just yeah. 
I suppose you could say. I mean, it's both really. That trench now for our dewatering is affecting us today. I mean, we can't get to the back of the site right now because of that trench, but the water main also is an issue. All right. So that, that shows where our trench is now. Mm -hmm. And we weren't planning on going as far north with that. All right, any other questions? Oh, go ahead. So what you're saying is um, you, if, if you are allowed to have this uh, temporary easement, you would be able to continue to have construction on the building and do the water main. Um, otherwise you would have to do one or the other. Correct. And you would not be able to work on the building. So really what you're asking us to do is access to the park so that you can get your entire project done. By May. By May, by your opening hard, cold opening day. Yeah. So really it's just to keep on your construction schedule. Yes. Sure. Okay. All right, I'm just trying to understand the entire mm -hmm. issue here. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on. So Madam Mayor and Council, just a kind of general um, thought process going forward. I mean, would you like me to work with the construction company on developing some of those alternate plans, plan B, plan C? Yeah, were you aware of the alternate plans? Um, we had talked about them briefly at one of the construction meetings that we had as far as staging equipment, um, such as at the end of Butler Street, mm -hmm. um, and then moving equipment in that way. So. Um, yeah. I'd be happy to do that in the next couple of days to uh, mm -hmm. bring in some other options. Again, I know the sensitivity to the park, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, personally, I personally I don't really enjoy the fact of heavy equipment going through that park, whether it's on a Dura base or not, because we know what that's going to do to the ground. It's never been approved before for a private business, so. Personally, I have a hard time when we have road and other access points that are shorter or even main road. So, I mean, this is why we have you here. Sure. This is your role. Um, that's my opinion. And how much further would it put them behind if they go through the access point closer to the restaurant? If they're just, if they're, that's their only spot that they can go in, how much further is it going to be like well past May 15th? We still have our friend here, Aaron. Yeah, it could set you back about three or four weeks, so like into June. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do that. I'll, I'll reach out to you and work on some alternate plans. And yep. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have uh, several board of review items. I'll let the manager take them one at a time. Board right. of review, March alternate dates. Yeah, this is a housekeeping item. Um, you'll see this every year, mm -hmm. uh, setting updates for the board of review. This is on page 17 of your packet. Um, any questions? It'll come up on Monday. Any questions? Uh, more so just, yeah, a question, I guess. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> That's put it. Um, so this is setting an alternate date when we should have been meeting on. So more my question of what's driving the need to have an alternate date set as opposed yeah, to the regular we, scheduled date. To have the assessor on yes, the Yes, hello, yeah, hello assessor. Hi there. <laughs> assessor. Well, how are you doing, assessors? <laughs> Hi, Hi, folks. Hi. Hi. Yep. So I'm Tony. I'm your assessor. Uh, for those of you that don't know. Um, yeah, so we are... <clears throat> asking for the alternate start date. Uh, this is, you know, a lot of townships or cities do this throughout the state of Michigan. So um, it's just kind of a housekeeping issue, but, you know, we've got multiple assessing units that we have to be the assessor for. Um, and it's kind of hard to be in, you know, four places at one time, right? So uh, we just want to make sure that uh, we can be there. So by law, the assessor doesn't have to be at the, the March Board of Review, but we certainly prefer to be there. And um, by doing the 16th instead of the 14th, the, that would allow us to do so. Yeah, very good. Great. Thank, thank, thank you. you. That was my question. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. So just a little information. I was on the board of review for three years, and I think at least once, maybe twice, we moved the date because Diana at that time was our assessor, and she had the same problem. 
because um, she was managing several different municipalities and it was just ease of schedule for her because those are long days in March. Those are what eight hours one day and eight hours the next. So not only is it a lot of time for the board of review members, it's also quite a bit of time for the assessors, <laughs> that whole time span. So this really helps them. And it, it also helps get all of your board of review members there um, from a scheduling perspective, so, <laughs> just from experience. Thank you for addressing that, Good. appreciate it. Thank you. All right, next one. This is a uh, poverty exemption. Yeah. yeah, poverty exemption. This is also a housekeeping item. Uh, this is on page 19 of your packet. Um, I believe this has uh, come into play a few times over the years, but again, we have our assessors here to go ahead and explain this item. I know you've joined yeah. us, so go for it. Yeah, so, um, you know, every year we have to update the poverty exemptions, um, the guidelines for them. So basically what we're setting here are the income levels that are acceptable for um, to receive a poverty exemption. Um, so those are updated every year by um, Health and Human Services. And, you know, the guidelines that you have in front of you um, show that. In addition, we have to have an asset test, uh, which is also included in this. Uh, we have to update that every year as well. But probably the more important um, issue that you see on these, because you'll see that this looks quite different from your prior poverty um, guidelines, yeah. is the state has changed the law to where uh, prior to this law change, Board of Reviews had um, a lot of flexibility with what they could do. They could, they could grant a partial poverty exemption based on 75% or 32%, you know, whatever they wanted to come up with. And um, <clears throat> the state um, lawmakers have said, you know what, no, no more of that. You have three options. You can be 100% exempt, you can be 50% exempt, or you can be 25% exempt. So, um, you know, you'll see that in your income guidelines now um, for those percentages. Now, we cannot deviate from those percentages anymore like we used to be able to. Um, the other thing that is removed from the guidelines is some verbiage that um, was very, very common in guidelines throughout the state was that board of reviews can deviate from these guidelines um, for cer uh, insinuating circumstances. And um, the state um, has said, no, no more of that. These are your guidelines. You have to follow your guidelines. And if you don't follow your guidelines, um, we are gonna mark you deficient in your audit of minimum assessing requirements. So we had to remove some of that verbiage um, from the guidelines. So fun stuff. Tony, Tony Ross Gardner, City Council. Thank you again for sharing this information. Actually, the poverty guidelines, I'm in healthcare. We use the same guidelines for uncompensated care for patients. My question though, for the city of Sartuck, have we ever granted any percentage exemption for any property owner? That's a good question. No? Um, I, I can tell you, I used to work for Allegan County uh, 20 years ago. And um, not that I can ever remember, uh, seeing a partial exemption. Yeah. Kind of curious if we've ever used this. Yeah, it's obviously not, not we have to have used it. I'm not saying you haven't used it, but I don't think you've ever done a partial. Yeah. Um, now you may have granted a poverty exemption at a hundred percent rate. You know, a hundred percent exemption, but not a not a partial. Okay, so we didn't do any sliding scale exemptions. It was either hundred percent or or zero. Do we know of any properties that are exempt currently? I don't. I, don't. I know this came. I know this issue came up last year, um, but I don't think anything happened with it. Yeah, go ahead. I actually looked into that today. Um, we were looking into what what kind of exemptions do we have that to look forward to at the board of review, and we do not currently have any poverty. Um, we do have several veteran uh, okay. exemptions, but no part of poverty currently. Yeah, that's what I recall was the veteran exception. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, um, go ahead, Holly. I just uh, wanted to say that as a city, uh, I'm glad that we're doing it. I, I happen to live with the chair of the Board of Review, I had a conversation with him about it, and he said we've never been able to offer it prior. 
And I know that there was at least one instance mm -hmm. where there was a, a disabled party who could have used it, I believe, last year, but I don't think we had a policy really in place. So I'm really happy to see this. And I think this is a, a good service that we are offering to our citizens. Great, great. All right, very good. Okay, next one. This is item D, Madam Mayor. This is page 25, and this will be probably the last item for our assessor today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Um, and they're recommending that we uh, adopt um, the ability to have an alternate member on the Board of Review. Okay. Um, and I would just turn it over to them to All right. explain the reasoning there. All right, go ahead, fellas. Yeah, so, um, you know, Michigan law allows for um, us to have alternate members on the board of review. And what that means is, um, you know, sometimes there's scheduling conflicts, so on and so forth. And this would just give us one other person that we could maybe lean on if we need to, if not all of our board members can make it to a meeting. And, and, and it would be exactly what it sounds like, an alternate board of review member. Very good. And is it up to two, oh, okay. it looks like, is what I saw. Yeah. No, no more than two. Okay. Council, any questions? Nope. It's pretty straightforward. Yep. All right. Very good. It's good to see you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys right. for uh, taking this up for us. All right. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. We'll vote on these on Monday. All right. Very good. Mr. Manager, next one, dumpster. We've had this discussion. Yeah. Um, so this is on page. This is on page 28 of your packet. Um, this would be a license agreement for a dumpster enclosure for units 302, 322 through 322 on Culver Street. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, this condominium complex um, cannot keep their uh, garbage inside of their building, and so they're looking for a dumpster location. Um, what they're recommending and what, what they pass through historic. Uh, commission is that they place the dumpster enclosure next to the scooters pizzeria there you'll see the the picture um, so this will be in front of you on Monday uh, we did have the attorneys review this and again it did go through the historic commission okay questions council yeah uh, mm -hmm. I know we've discussed this previously um, what I did not see in the agreement and maybe if I missed it I could use some help is that if the city has to step in if the property owner, for some reason or other, is not complying with the license and the city has to remove garbage or other refuse, what is the remedy for the city to recover that? I didn't see anything in the agreement that spoke to that. And if I missed it, that situation makes sense. Mm -hmm. If the license was... Well, um, let's say that for some reason or another, the property owner yeah. did not keep up their end of the bargain and the city had to step in and remove garbage. I didn't see anything in there that, that stipulates exactly what the city will do in the event that it's not being taken care of as it should be under the license. The city has to call in, you know, Republic or someone to remove. That makes sense what I'm asking? Um, yeah. I think so. It, yeah, if I missed it, let me know. I thought it was down here. Madam Mayor, for me. Yep, go ahead. So you're saying if the, the dumpster is not being serviced, correct, and it's on our easement, and then we have to come in and correct. get Republic yep. to do extra service, then how do we recover costs yep. or do what's the remediation? Exactly. Sure. I can check into it. Mm -hmm. um, if I may, so I'm, the bottom of page 29D, it might be able to be added in there under clean license premises and what it goes on to say. Um, Might be a possibility. Okay, thank you. Sound good. So this was, um, I remember we had the conversation about the scooter um, trash location and that's to the other side of the building because they're coming out their back door with trash. Is that right? The scooters. So we already have the scooters trash. And yeah. They had to up improve it. Right. It's going to just go next to that. Right. Next it's to basically it. going to extend and he's redoing all the fencing. So it will all match. Ah, okay. So it'll basically be two dumpster enclosures. One will be for the condos. One will be for the scooters building. So one will be for restaurant and the other will be for uh, the condos. That's right. Cause you talked about this in historic. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Go ahead. We'll 
Does that mean it'll take out that parking space? I'm looking at the- It's not. No. no, it's on the grassy area. There's bushes there currently on the side of the scooters building. It'll yeah. go where the bushes are. Okay, I'm just wondering how they access that with the pickup truck or whatever they do. There's a parking spot in front of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that they'll either just back the garbage truck into that area and remove it. And I know, can I make a comment? Because I have an answer to that. Question. Okay. Red. Hi. I didn't want to interrupt, but I have an answer. Um, I'm sorry. Do you, do you mind introducing yourself? I don't know you, sir. Yeah. My name's Fred Jerry. I own um, uh, three of the units at 129 Griffith Street, Saugatuck Muse Condominium Building. Thank you. Uh, this um, dumpster enclosure is for the Saugatuck Muse Condo Association, even though it's going next to the Scooters building, which I also um, own. Mm -hmm. the, the, the question that just came up as far as how they will access, I, I met with two supervisors from Republic Waste who know the volume of uh, garbage being used at the Saugatuck Muse building, where you have um, eight residential units up some of them are VRBO, things like that. And then you have um, six commercial down. So based on their assessment of, of volume there, a four yard dumpster takes care of it without a problem. I mean, you can vary your pickups between one and three days a week, depending on um, the, you know, the season that you're in. This particular thing going in was designed, we, we could make it um, fairly small. It's, it's about uh, six, six and a half feet wide. Um, it's about six feet deep and about, and about um, seven feet wide, seven, seven or eight feet wide. It, it doesn't come onto the parking lot at all. It doesn't take any space at all. And the truck doesn't need to go in to pick up the dumpster. The dumpster is going to be a four yard plastic dumpster. The guys open the gate, they pull it out, in they pull it out then the truck picks it up dumps it the guys roll it back in mm -hmm. so it doesn't roll along the grass or anything no grass is being cemented over anything like that um but it does fix a big health hazard where all of these 95 gallon individual garbage things are currently being held under the staircases at um at the Saugatuck Muse condominium building. All those will go away. Um, that fire hazard won't be there anymore. They won't be under any residential units. So um, I said, hey, we, you know, if, if it's okay with the city, we could put it next to my building on the grass where we already, ha already have an enclosure. And I've also agreed with the um, historic board to have this, have the scooters dumpster rebuilt to match it and painted to match it. I'm actually gonna work with John Canarsa who did the front of the Scooters Grow Loco Burrito building to help coordinate that to make it as um, you know appealing as possible for a dumpster enclosure. Um, so the truck doesn't need to get in there and you know it, it's not a big metal one. It's a four yard plastic on rollers. Yep, all right. Thank you, Fred. Okay. Thanks, okay. Very good. Um, hi, again, don't need me to interrupt, but this is Lauren Cato. Uh, I'm uh, in-house counsel for the Saugatuck Muse Condo Association and also a resident. Um, and I wanted to go back to the um, time to cure in case we breach the agreement. So right now, um, paragraph six, allows us time to cure within five days, but it does not, um, you're correct, it does not um, allow for uh, the condo association to pay, to reimburse the city for any costs in case you need to step in and cure. So I would be happy to um, negotiate that with your, with your council, I am, concerned about just the five days, if we're going to reimburse for cure, 
I'd like something to say that, you know, if we commence cure, we have a little bit more time to cure just because of, you know, how difficult it is to um, retain trades these days and, you know, get everything done within five days. So I can just negotiate that language, tweak it a little bit and put in an obligation for us to reimburse the city for any costs that you may con uh, may incur if you need to step in and, and complete the cure that we have failed to do. And hopefully that's something that we never have to address. Okay, we'll let the managers take that up with our attorneys. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Great. Likely we'll make the motion on Monday contingent upon working up the language. All right, you'll let us know. Okay, very good. All right, thank you. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, finish your notes. We don't. All right, Arbor Day Proclamation 2022. Okay. This is on page uh, 33, Madam Mayor. Um, and this is one of the items that's required to uh, continue the city of Saugatuck as being a tree city. Mm -hmm. All right, pretty straightforward, regular Very occurrence. Straightforward. <laughs> All right, any questions from council? Very straightforward. All right, very good. Okay, next item's uh, special event, the market at the SCA. Mr. Manager. Well, page uh, 35, Madam Mayor, um, Center for the Arts hosting farmer and their, their market, 41 vendors mm -hmm. on three non-consecutive dates, uh, requesting the full parking lot closure, Culver Street parking lot on each occasion. Um, they say that's approximately 800 guests, uh, no music, no alcohol, no fireworks. Uh, they've attached their application. Um, and so we did reach out to um, fire and city. Uh, we have their comments. Um, for the, it's all there. All right. I've got questions for council. Yes. Go ahead. Um, go ahead, Lauren. No, I just, I know they did this last year on maybe two different occasions. Were there any issues from it? No, this did this did come up last year. Um, I think the concern last year was utilizing the entire parking lot. Um, and it was a concern that was presented. We didn't, we didn't hear any negative feedback on the, I think the two occasions that they, they did do that last year. Um, so it always seems, um, you know, startling because it's in the middle of summer and they're taking up a whole parking lot. But I know it's done by three o'clock mm -hmm. and it seems like a time that parking wasn't as big of an issue mm -hmm. during those early morning times. And, and just to clarify this, this is happening because there is an, a, there are events happening in their parking lot, which is where the market would ordinarily be so there's a, a performance or that makes just i'm just trying to understand that's my understanding are you aware yeah okay so next year is their 20 year anniversary and i know there are quite a few events uh, around that uh, last year we had the issue with covid there were no indoor performances at the sca so that's they had the stage set up and couldn't really utilize that space so that's that is my sense of that's what's happening again as they happen to that. Yes, Ross. So these dates are going to be um, they're going to have it in the main parking lot and then continue to have the Friday events on those other Fridays because it's every Friday, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's every Friday. So it'll be in the smaller SCA lot and then these three particular Fridays will be in the larger main lot, right? City lot. Other things going on in their lot, yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, and I think we had, June, sorry, June, June 17th is a Friday. Yeah. They're, all They're all Fridays. All Fridays. They're all Fridays. 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 Yeah, okay. So it's the, it's the regular market just can't be yeah. in the parking lot. Yep. Their, their parking lot. Um, anybody else? Oh, I, and then I just recall last year they worked it out with the high school mm -hmm. um, because the high school manages the parking lot. I think we don't do it on great, Fridays. Great relationship. Do it, we do it after five o'clock on Fridays. Right. Usually the high school yeah. does. Starts at five on Fridays. Yep. Yeah. All right. Any other okay. questions or concerns? Pretty straightforward. All right. Very good. Next item, special event, shamrock run, walk, or roll. 
<laughs> so page 51 of your, of your packet. So could we just run, walk, or roll? Um, so we did receive what I would call late coming um, event requests. Um, I know there's a lot of back and forth with Jamie and the event organizer. Um, and they're looking at doing some, some uh, a race um, and they say they're gonna have 25 to, to 40 attendees. They're also looking at a road closure uh, on Mary Street. Um, and again, just given the, the, the late coming event request, and it seems a little disorganized, and I will also mention that we're working with emergency services, both police and fire on establishing safe parade, uh, parade routes, um, which will include barricades of some, of some type and just kind of a uniform parade route that everyone is comfortable with from a safe, safety viewpoint and that it's just well organized. I would say this, this event and this application does not meet that criteria. I'm not inclined to have recommend that city council support this one, uh, but would be happy to re reach out to the event organizer to see if they could modify it in some way, which does not involve um, road closures and or uh, the need for um, safety barricades, what have you, especially given the, the low uh, anticipated participation numbers. That's just where I'm at with this event. Go ahead, Lauren. I see a question then, Ken. No? No. I'm, I'm mulling it over a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you got a question? Well, they state they'll primarily run on the sidewalks, meaning they're going to run on the street as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, having, having been a race organizer myself, uh, those are the exact questions I was going to ask is I want to see a detailed plan for runner safety and the controls. Two is um, based on this, and I don't want to pass any judgment, but it looks like this person is organizing this event for the first time. So um, I think your points are well taken in terms of let's make sure it's done right because if it's not it can result in some problems for the for the yeah, city i'd say let's try for next year and yeah. on this one right. yeah and i think the also the fire department did not indicate approval or denial so that that is missing as well so they've seen the application and you know without that approval or denial you really can't do anything so yeah. i'm in support of more running and activity events outside events are wonderful i just mm -hmm. want to have them done well and yeah. safely for everybody that's going to participate yeah. Thank you. just out of curiosity it's cut off on this but uh mm -hmm. the raising money for what mm -hmm. OPE, -E, and then it's cut off yeah i had the same question i wasn't what clear who was benefiting it, it was it's been unclear to us as well i think jamie initially uh we were we had an indicator that it was a non-for-profit but um we didn't think that to be the case. I mean, not that it's a big deal, but um, it, what is it? A wellness center or something? Yeah, I'm sorry. It, was a, I can't it was a race for some like children's organization of some sort. Mm. I don't remember the exact name. Okay. But, but run through a private company. It wasn't like they were a non for profit themselves that were putting this on. Like, um, but it was the application did say it was. For a nonprofit, so yeah, it's just isn't. Yeah, it's, it's cut, cut off. It's cut off. Yeah. All right. I just so, hate to squash anybody's efforts yeah. that are trying to come up with that. Is there someone that can help her? Um, you know, organize this for the future and like come up with, like you said, a standard parade route and use the same parade route. Do we always want to use the same parade route? Just so it, or not parade route, but race route. Um, you know, I, you kind of want to diversify where you, you know, have those types of things, but um, I just hate to squash anybody's effort to put something like this together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a great question. It's, it's been coming up um, a, lot, a lot lately. Um, and it, as I actually said, this morning Sadaba meeting, um, the city itself is not an event organizer. Uh, we're here to facilitate and to help out, make sure it's safe, make sure it's, you know, run well. But, you know, we, we as city staff don't have the capacity to work out the logistics of a, an event. And this has been coming up time and time again, where people just like, hey, I want to do this thing. Okay. Figure it out for us. And we're like, whoa, <laughs> wait a second here. We're doing, we're doing other stuff. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think they need, I'll just give an example quick and I'll make it yeah. brief. Um, there is like this um, traveling, I don't know, a car 
show, for lack of a better term. 100 cars going from Chicago around Lake Michigan, coming back. They reached out to Lisa Mize. Lisa Mize said, hey, can you help these guys out? I said, no, I, I really can't, um, but I can link them up with Sadaba um, and they can give them some localized knowledge and we can give them our event form Good. and they can you know, fill out the event form in detail. Um, but um, yeah, they need, to, you know, they need to put in some work, these, these event, and event organizers and work out logistics and probably long-winded answer to <laughs> No, that's good. I'm just hoping that they have somebody to turn to on, you know, and you're saying Sadaba would be a good place to start. And even Sadaba, you know, with the same example, the, the, the car folks, they're like, hey, we'll give you some localized knowledge, but we don't even have the capacity. So there is definitely a missing piece of an event organizer in Saugatuck. And I can't speak for Doug, Douglas, but I would imagine it's kind of the same. They have far less events as far as I understand it, but mm -hmm. definitely a need for an event organizer. And I don't know who's gonna fill that gap going forward, but I think there's some ideas being thrown around. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, All right. I, would, uh, I would just say I, I would support um, them working with, I mean, they could even talk to the Rotary about right. I mean, there, there is knowledge within the community about how to do these types of races. There are plenty of people that have organized on those over the years. Um, so once perhaps we get the guidelines in place that are being worked on with public safety, then it might be uh, a better, we might have a better go at this. Yeah. And I agree, I'm very supportive of people proposing events in the shoulder season. We've said in the past that that's something that we are really, wanting to promote but i just i don't i don't feel like they're there yet and maybe we're not there yet so it's a bit much to try to pull this off next month okay yeah. all right so this will not be on the agenda monday up to the mayor if she wants i wouldn't to. i wouldn't think so it doesn't need to be i mean because they're not ready yet it's not a complete, complete, yeah it's not a complete application basically i would agree Okay. Yeah, I don't see we don't have public safety and... approval yet. Mm -mm. No, there's a few things missing from this application. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, and like I said, I'll reach out to them and say, let's give it a go for next year and let's okay. hook you up the right people. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's a little short notice for this year. Good. Okay. Yeah. yeah the, the town crier race is in what June. So who organizes that? They should maybe talk mm -hmm. to them. There's the fall half marathon. Yeah. Event. There's plenty of people in town yeah. that you can have, you can meet at Uncommon and get to the bottom of it and get some good tips. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. The next three items are all related. Yeah. St starts, on, starts on page 58. This would be what I would consider your second reading of mm -hmm. expanded outdoor dining, what was previously known as pop-up patios. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've reviewed this and Kate, she's here. So yeah, this is all, this is all her there. work. <laughs> this is all her work product. Um, so kudos to Kate for just doing, uh, going through the, the whole gamut of um, networking with the community and working with the attorneys and bringing what I think is a, a very sound policy that's been vetted by uh, your, your, your uh, legal counsel. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you have three items that are all interrelated. Okay. Uh, you have an ordinance, you have a, um, a policy adoption via resolution. Um, and then you have a schedule fee adoption. So that just changes the fee, but you do that mm -hmm. via resolution as well. Um, so happy to address any questions okay. uh, that you may have and Kate will probably be the one I'll turn to. All right, so let's, let's take the first one, amending chapter 96. This is the expanded outdoor dining area license required. Owners or operators of bars or restaurants. I don't know that a cigar establishment is a bar or a restaurant per the gentleman's question. Yes, Russ. Yeah, I've, uh, by the way, Kate, fantastic yes. job. You've done a really um, nice presentation of putting this all together. Mm -hmm. So my questions are more around, I think, just kind of defining as the mayor just said. Um, the very opening here, the owners are operators of bars or restaurants. Um, and later on in the second resolution, it's actually better defined is that, um, and I don't think we had any bars that don't serve food that... Mm -hmm. Put you technically up, have to because they don't you technically have to serve food if you're a bar exactly so i think that <laughs> even though it's kind of subtle i think it's an important point to make is that this is for a restaurant mm -hmm. or some establishment that serves food mm -hmm. um 
So I, I just think that's something we need to think of from a definition standpoint, that it's not being open to bars that don't serve food. So that's just one point. Um, I, I don't know. What, sand, you, sand bar? you have to have, sandbar sand bar serves food sure, for the record. Oh yeah. 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 They have food. Yeah. They have warm food. But they're, yeah, yeah. But they're technically not a yeah. restaurant. They have euros. Uh, yeah. You can get a euro. Good yeah. to know. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> don't ask Ken. Yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> a <laughs> big euro. The place on the other side of Culver here is um, New Holland. Oh, New Holland. Mm, New Holland. Yeah. And New yeah. Holland oh. Distillery. So mm -hmm. they yeah. don't serve food, right? No, they don't. They don't serve food. Copper craft. Copper craft. They mm. do not. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Okay. So they probably have a different type of license. That's so. okay. You know, that's a so, distillery. Right. It's okay though. I think to be definitive, I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I, I think the tighter we can make this, I think it's going to serve us well in the long run. Okay, um, so just to be clear on that point, then just kind of the consensus is to just remove bars and just have restaurants or sorry. Yeah, and actually, I think there's later on here, it says all any food and beverage service business is another description is another description that's in the procedures mm -hmm. that have been written. So I, I don't know, there's got it. I'd like to see that consistent language throughout the resolution. So it matches. Okay, so we're not necessarily saying bars are if they don't, so, so you're not necessarily, just be consistent with the language is what yeah. I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, this does say outdoor dining areas. It doesn't Correct. say outdoor Correct. bars. Bar right. And it is for dining. It's Great. Right. Yeah. Right. So are we thinking along the lines of you don't want parking spots taken if it's just adult beverages? <laughs> you don't want parking spots. I like, we just haven't talked about it, whether what, right. Our thoughts are with right. that. Do we not want parking spots taken if they're just having an adult beverage? Well, I mean, if, if I may, you have to you have to ask yourself what our social district does then. Right, exactly. That's a good question. Yeah, that's, that's good a good point. Yeah. And and I mean, if I'm honest, I didn't see the bars utilize those spaces utilized like Wicks Park was in uh, Bodie's. You know, I, I didn't see that. Well, they didn't, and I, I know from the owner of the sandbar, he had no intention of, of mm -hmm. ever doing something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is one other place that we'd have to. Yeah. So, um, as far as consistency, though, though, that is correct. So, if we're saying in one bars and restaurants, then we should probably say same thing here. Rather than food and beverage service, should we just right. say bars and restaurants? Is it, or one or the other, whichever. I think at least say it's food the same. and beverage. That's food and my, beverage. That would be my. Does that make sense, Kate? Do you have any opinions on this as you hide behind the podium? <laughs> <laughs> Just food and beverage service. Does that make sense? That's, yeah. that's yeah. what I would. Food expect. and beverage. I don't know. Is that good? So that how you all feel. On but page fifty nine, then the owners or operates operators of food or beverage. Food or beverage, food, food and, and beverage. beverage. Food, food and, and beverage. beverage. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. that's I mean, tough. If, if okay. the bars had really utilized it, mm -hmm. I, I would have, I would feel differently. Right. But. True. Is that anywhere else that it's, Russ, did you notice? I, I did notice. That was the. That was it, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Then yeah, here into food or beverage service. Oh, sorry. Nope, that's okay. I'm looking, I'm finding it everywhere. Okay. Then into item B. Um, I'm a little uncomfortable with the um, general nature of some of the statements. And I know that the actual application goes into further detail about this. I'm just wondering if it's an opportunity to align those as well. Because when it says be adequately illuminated, mm -hmm. that could mean 10 different things to 20 different people. Mm -hmm. All right. So what does adequately illuminated mean? Yeah. Um, be aesthetically pleasing and consistent with the general character of the surrounding area. Well, again, that's open to that's <laughs> open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. So I think if we want to really get this right out of the gate, we should be thinking about not to be totally, you know, screwing this down to one idea, but to make sure that we've got something that the zoning administrator who's going to be approving these applications. Mm -hmm. Can reasonably measure against an ordinance that can be saying, okay, it meets the ordinance or it doesn't meet the ordinance. Yeah. Um, and and I don't want to speak for, for Cindy. I think Cindy's on the line, but I just know from past experience that the better this is defined, the more easy it is for us to consider yeah. applications. It makes it easier on the city staff. As Lauren, well. did you have a comment? No, I just um, you know, if it if it details it better um, further down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which it, page which, 67. Yeah, I feel like those other areas kind of 
yeah. go into more detail. Yeah, yeah, they do. No cement block, and I think that's covered in the next one. And um, you know, that's go okay, ahead, Kate. Kate. She's yeah, Hahan. You want to so stand up? Just... Yep, come up to the microphone so people can hear you. Sorry. Um. So, the ordinance. Um, was written by legal so yep, um, and then the policy will further determine got our it. requirements on our end so got they it. supplement each other right um, that's the intention there perfect okay. that's perfect okay that's good to know because you don't want to i mean you don't want to keep repeating in every one there's one for one thing and there's another for another yes so. and i think keeping the ordinance fairly Simple. i guess not vague but got kind it. of vague um and then having the ordinance be more detailed it's um, sorry, the policy to be more detailed, it would be easier to change our policy going forward than to change the, yeah. an ordinance. Got it. Good point. That's yeah. a good point. So, Mayor, 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 to, to build on this, then, given Kate's comment about the flexibility in mm -hmm. terms of us saying yes or no, or the zoning people saying yes or no. Mm -hmm. So, does, does that mean that food, food and beverage is the best terminology to use versus restaurant? I'm, I'm just thinking of a situation where somebody says, well, I've got, you know, bottles of water and chips here, so mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm entitled to an outdoor patio. Go ahead. Um, um, well, I I was just nodding because I, I agree. I think there's some vagueness in saying food and beverage service, um, but um, I use that terminology just as uh, recommended by legal. Mm -hmm. um, so if, I mean, if you guys want to be more restrictive um, and just make it maybe full food service establishments or... Well, I, um, or if we want to keep it kind of vague. It, yeah, this is all, I mean, this, again, we talked about this in the many different public sessions that we had. Mm -hmm. So you start somewhere and if it needs to be revised based on experience, then mm -hmm. we can do that. But yeah. to try to figure out all the possible things that might possibly arise, <laughs> we'd be here forever. Yeah. Um, and we at least need to allow the process to start. And then as issues arise deal with them at that time would you not agree yes i agree okay mm -hmm. the, yeah the, that's why i favor uh being explicit about being a food service uh establishment food not food and bar we yep. can always open it up to bars later on but mm -hmm. it's it's harder to push push it back than it is to push it forward got it okay okay Could very it, good other uh, uh, would it be possible to maybe add a reference in the ordinance to the procedure just a thought to the policy yeah yeah policy excuse me you know as far as in this introduction of ordinance right there to refer to the policy yeah just say that more detail provided in mm -hmm. because it does get more specific. yeah and as a policy yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. i think that's as fine. the policy changes then that yeah. Yeah. then we don't have to change ordinance that yeah. that's fine okay yeah. so refer to the policy and i yeah I, I would just agree with you mayor that it's this is a work in progress for cities all over the country and you know we're we have said this multiple times that you know we we will it may not be perfect and we allow ourselves to change as we go okay um yes go so ahead. page 60 referencing what christine yep. had talked about is the applicant pays in full the fee for um mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts um it, it i mean just doing the math it could be upwards of six thousand dollars for certain establishments it is yep. a lot but are we mm -hmm. there's that question and also the question of if they want to do it month mm -hmm. like two months versus the entire amount. And I know that's in there. Yep, let's hold this thought for a second. I wanna to okay. try to keep them one at one okay. each. So that's the last one we'll talk about is the fee adoption. And then I think we can talk about it sure. if you don't mind. Yep. Um, so any other questions about the expanded outdoor dining area ordinance? It's supposed to be vague, attorneys have approved this. Yes. We'll change the food and beverage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so second one. You want to say anything about this one? Or do you oh, this no one's, comments. Nope. Yeah. Resolution expanded outdoor dining policy. It's creating formal guidelines and procedures for handling the licensing of the public right of way to food and beverage service businesses. Are you on 63? I'm on 62. 63. Oh, 63. Yeah. 62, yeah. 63. 63 just had a couple of typos. Yeah. If we can just fix those. Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, I just see the, the one. Is there another one that uh, I'm missing? There's the one in A. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah, so so Hall, one. and then I think there was one in C. Uh, form should be from. Yeah. That's uh -huh. no biggie. okay. Just then, to good just, thank you. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> just to help you out. And then to back up to page sixty, there was a duplication under section four. It said shall take effect twice. Except it's oh, yeah. one of them. Good. She'll take effect. Yeah. Where is that, Russ? Page sixty, item okay. number section four. Yeah, effective date. Yeah. This oh, ordinance shall that. take I didn't effect. See that. Date, the like day after. Good job. A bunch of play. academics <laughs> in this room. You know what? So please, everyone, read their packet. Yeah. This was <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. This was a test. <laughs> Sorry. This was a test. Sorry. We put that there intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> They're like sitting down there cackling. So <laughs> let's see how many of these they can find. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this helps. Um, it's a little game we play. No, All, right. Guys are doing great. All right, that one's pretty straightforward. Any questions about the policy adoption? Item J. Um, so under the policy, Ms. Mayor. Um, yeah. So under the policy itself, I think, and it, 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 it was kind of alluded to just a moment ago, is that um, do we intend to limit the number of parking spaces that a business can occupy, or is it going to be limited by their ability to finance eight months of fees? Are we on J or K? Did we move up? Um, where are we at? So I wasn't sure where to insert this conversation, but more around the policy of the city. Is the policy of the city, for instance, to allow mm -hmm. um, I don't know, choose a was... restaurant, Bodie's, for instance. And I'm not picking up Bodie's particularly, but is Bodie's allowed to just lease one spot, one space, or can they lease three if they can pay the appropriate amount? You see, it, I know uh, we were limiting it to two yes. per establishment. Two per um, that yeah, was it's, it, well, case. it's limited. Um, eight feet mm -hmm. um by by 40 feet so that'd be two parking eight. spaces um and then also if you're so if you're on water street that's angle parking we're allowing them to extend um instead of eight feet be it would be 15 feet yeah so the eight by 40 is two spots yes okay so the two spots so that means that they'll be paying 200 essentially 400 dollars a month for right two yes um i i will note that um the lawyer suggested that we make it they so we make it that the applicants can select um months so say you want to do um june july and august okay then you would submit your application mm -hmm. by um may okay and then you would pay for those three months because um for fees you want to pay for the benefit you receive yeah. um and if we force people to pay for the eight seasons and they end up not using it um eventually it's kind of like a tax so we want to make sure that the the fee is proportionate to the benefits they receive yeah, plus the fact That's that funny. it doesn't tie up a parking space or two that is not being used. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. So go ahead. Any other questions? Uh, no, that, that's where I'm at with that is yeah. wondering what we're doing with that. So in Christine's case, since we have an example, knowing mm -hmm. her, she'll want it from April till October. She'll want it the whole darn time. Yeah. Have we we would expect her to pay to pay full. in full. Yes, that's what legal recommended. That's what legal recommends. Yeah. Okay. Um. If we do. Kidney. Okay. <laughs> well. Okay. Yeah. If we if we do like tracking monthly payments. Yeah. At that point, we're kind of like land landlords, and it just becomes difficult tracking everybody's payment. Okay. Um. For you know just logistics and, and ease of administration. Yeah. Um. I I think this makes the most sense. Okay. And Kate, there wasn't a, an issue with say they decide they only want to do three months and who's going to say get your stuff out of here you only paid for three months if you, they, i'm sorry can you repeat if that they question? if they stop if they want it for june july and august yeah. and their outdoor seating is still there in october oh it gets it gets seized so the we have it where um, they'll be sent a notice okay um, and i'm going to be sure to you know be tracking um, okay. make sure calendaring out people's um permit dates and stuff like that that's not too much of a burden on you. permits um so i can keep track and and make sure to do timely notices to people letting them know when their um per, uh, license is about to expire um and then we do a two-day written prior written notice okay. um to the individual if they haven't removed their um structures or furniture and then at that point it becomes our property okay if they do not remove okay. so all right okay Kind of on that front, uh, I'm, I would suggest that once a establishment pulls a license, that we require that they display that license where it can be seen by anybody from enforcement that will know 
you know, this establishment has leased four spaces, for instance, for this time period. That's quite common in many places where zoning enforcement can just walk by and literally look at it because we don't expect everybody to memorize each establishment. Kind of like you have to put up a license that you have a liquor license or that you have a dining license, something that can be easily seen by anybody that, you know, whether it's the fire department, police, code enforcement. I don't, go ahead. I, I don't know that we would necessarily need that because it would be filed um, yeah. at the city so, and all of those agencies have that and getting to aesthetics mm -hmm. like there's you know there's a fair amount of, of if you're serving liquor you have to have you know I, I don't know I just we sort of wanted to shy away from the signs and yeah. you know I, I think since we have did you have a well I have a suggestion yeah. um, so instead of making it like a display um, when we do issue a license and it does get approved we could just notify um, fire department, so Chief Janik and um, vets and, and all those people. So they're aware, mm -hmm. um, yeah. maybe that could be a compromise. Yeah. Yeah. We also ask that they maybe display the license with their other licenses that they have. I know the Liquor Control Commission requires a closer license. Maybe just include it with that. Some, some, somewhere it's not just. Yeah, again, I don't think that's necessary. I think you already, I think you're, you're fine with what we've got. So that's. I, I think, I think if we all had a list of the establishments yeah. and when they're mm -hmm. uh, approved, I yeah. think we can police it pretty well. <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right. Any other questions? So, yeah, I do have one more on a policy standpoint. Um, <clears throat> so expanded outdoor dining to me is pretty definitive. Are we going to allow outdoor entertainment, live bands, PAs, music, things of that nature? Just That's dining. something separate. Yeah. yeah, isn't that a whole different animal? That is. is a whole different animal. Yes. yes. So, yes, it is. whole different animal meaning that's addressed in a different part of the zoning mm -hmm. and yeah. policies for the city. I, yeah. I, I think we have a, something, a policy or ordinance related to street musicians. Mm -hmm. do. Right. We that, do. That, we yeah. Do. And then outdoor music as outdoor well. Outdoor music. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's handled elsewhere. So, it's allowed? It, it is, is allowed. It, is. it will be allowed. You have to have a permit. Mm -hmm. But they have to have a permit for it. Right. Separate permit. They have to have a permit for it. Yeah. Or they're an establishment that has already been approved through the planning commission in the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Any other? Um, I want to make a comment just because yeah. I noticed as I was reading through this when I printed this off, um, there is a, a redundancy in my standards for approval. So I, I intend to remove um, number 15, because it's already previously stated in um, number one under standards of approval. So I'm just making you aware of that. Not a big change, but. Okay. Right. That's one we didn't catch. Darn. Uh -huh. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gotta be. All right. Okay. So I have a quick question. So are we saying that if somebody wanted to have just one space, mm -hmm. they could have just one space? Yes. Okay. Very good. Awesome. Okay. And then for an establishment that obviously, you know, we had the gentleman on the call from the cigar shop, he still would have an opportunity to do sidewalk seating, correct? With a separate application doesn't have to do with the, um, the EODAs. It would be because I know several people have yeah. some sort of permit through Cindy um, where they can have seating sidewalk on cafes. the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, so I'm not that could be an option sure. for yeah. him is sidewalk seating, correct? Uh, Cindy, you, yeah, she's there. Yeah, Cindy, we've been calling you for sidewalk cafes. Does that have muted. a sunset date? She gone. She's muted. Well, she has. I just a know in the meeting. past when I've asked similar questions, yep. there are options for people who want to use the sidewalk, and that seems like that would be a good option for him. Yeah, um, we have oh, there she is. Hi, Cindy. Cindy. Hi. Hi. Um, I think, I think there, there are a lot, lot of establishments, establishments that, that have, have benches, benches between, between the, sidewalk the sidewalk and the, and the curb. curb, and, and um, that, would, that be would be a good place, place he, wants he wants to, to have, have a. a Smoking, smoking area. area. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, they're, they're not, not serving, serving food, food and beverages, beverages so, so he would not, not qualify for the on-street extended, extended outdoor, outdoor eating, eating establishments. <laughs> but but um, there's, there's options, options that, that he can choose. choose. I don't. I don't, I don't really, really know. know. I, I also, also question. question 
places, places that, that really, really don't, don't have food, food service. service. They, just they just have, have food, food takeout. takeout. Do, we, do, we, as, as, do they, they want, want to be included? included? Or, or is, is that, that not Cindy, I'm, cost Cindy, I'm so sorry, but it's like a stadium echo here. <laughs> I don't know if there's another device. I don't know what's going on. Um, but let us please, we'll get back to you on the question. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> it. I just want to help that gentleman out. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Sorry, you know, cafe is a thing. And it yeah. sounds well, like Cindy I, had some ideas. So we'll, we'll circle, we'll, we'll get back to you yeah, for Monday. What I can see happening is the, the food establishments, food and beverage establishments will be delighted. But then the next question will be from our businesses that aren't necessarily, well, what about us? Yeah. And um, my suggestion would be that they, work with Cindy and probably devise a similar policy to have to be basically. I, I know we do, we do have, um, license uh, some retailers like the store across the street here to put their goods on the, on the sidewalk. I'm not terribly in favor of that, but. Uh, right, and I, yeah, I think that was temporary because of COVID. Mm -hmm. That was a temporary allowance. Yeah. I well, think it was temporary. And I think it has expired. So they can no longer, and once they realize they can no longer, then they'll want to, they'll want something, but. We'll cross that bridge. We will cross that bridge. Yeah. Hopefully we can make it clear to the businesses in town so they know and don't feel like they're getting in trouble, slapped on the wrist because they have their things out there. They, you know, we should probably make some sort of announcement that um, this is yeah. no longer happening anymore. We can no longer have goods, mm -hmm. you know, on the sidewalks. That's, yeah, that's good communication. And then I just think about, you know, just the places that are over here that have Anirondex chairs on the sidewalks. Is that allowed? Is that, was that just during COVID or? So I'm just hoping to have some clarification on some of those things. Yeah. Because I'd like to see that continue. Yeah. So, okay. Right. Good. Other questions along the fee adoption resolution? That was pretty straightforward. All right. Okay. Very good. With that, we're to public comment on any item. If anybody would like, we don't have anybody here. Is anybody online that would like to offer a public comment? Hi, Barry. I see Barry. Hey. Hi, Barry. Hey, Barry. Got to unmute hey, yourself, Barry. bud. Hey, what up? Hi. Uh, <laughs> hey, I just wanted to, uh, I got two things. I'll make them as quick as I can. I just want to do on this whole discussion of uh, food or not. On this, I've uh, Observe that the New Holland distillery is uh, very heavily used with their little uh, pop-up patio. So I hope you don't cut everybody out that doesn't serve food. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was a uh, little historical perspective on the Muse. Um, it's been a bane in the city's uh, system for many years because they didn't follow their own plan. But I wanna remind everybody that the city gave up two parking places on the Culver Street parking lot. So they would have access to that garage door specifically for trash, uh, bringing trash out to the Culver Street parking lot for pickup by the provider. So uh, I'm afraid that the, you know, the properties changed hands over the years. I'm afraid that the people, the current owners bought a pig and a poke, uh, but um, we, the city has already given up two parking places for trash removal to that uh, garage door on the Culver Street parking lot. Um, so that's just historical perspective. All right, thanks, Barry. Thanks, Barry. All right, who else do we have? Anybody else? Yep, hi, Christina, see your hand. Hi. Can I talk? Can I yes, talk maybe. again? I don't yeah. know. I don't know, we okay. might, you know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So how many, how many spots can I have? Is it, I, I don't, I'm confused about how many spots I can have now. You can have two spots. Right. I mean, Hold on. she's got parallel. Yeah. Um, so I have, per Christine, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be 40 feet like wide. And then you have 15, 15 feet deep. Does that make sense? So instead of in the previous application, mm -hmm. it was um, the length of my building, eight, eight feet by 60 feet. And now it's going to be reduced um, eight, eight feet to 40 feet. But if you're on water street, it'll be 15 feet. Does that make sense? Right. Did we? Yes. Totally makes sense. Once again, I'm concerned about cars hitting the patio. It's not a very big, if two, I mean, I, I don't know. I just feel like now we just went smaller, which obviously that's not what I want. 
but now I only have two spots. So, I mean, I'll take the two spots in front of the Muse buildings, like one that we gave up. I mean, it just makes like, now I just have two spots and people are going to be turning from Mary Street. Uh, I don't know. You're not going to be able to see my patio when all those parking spots are taken. I don't know. I think logistically two on my corner is a little tight. Very hold tight. On, hold on, Christine. Okay, Kate, go. Um, Christine, so it's not necessarily two spots for you. You are located on angled parking okay. street. So it's going to be actually 40 feet. I was just saying 40 feet for a parallel parking okay. spot is approximately two parking spaces. Um, for okay. you, I'm not I guess exactly sure how many parking spaces that might be like four or five um parking okay. spaces guess, that you're allowed to consume yeah. i guess that goes with what russ was saying that in both the ordinance and the policy there is wording that none of it goes together and there's going to be a lot of pushback with the not having food so i mean I'm okay with whatever. Obviously, I'm in this fight to the end, but I think there's going to be a lot of pushback from New Holland, um, a lot of pushback from Coppercraft, whether they use it or not. They have the money; they'll they'll fight it. They'll do something. I mean, I don't know. It just all of a sudden seemed very vague, but not vague. Um, so, Christine, the intention to, is to include both food and beverage service businesses, so it wouldn't be exclusionary. Well, they just said it wasn't. If you don't serve food, you can't have it. Well, I believe did we not just say that? Be did including I including food and beverage service? Okay, yeah. This is this is public comment, not debate. So let's let's um, why don't you come in and work with Kate on this? I think you'll actually be uh, okay with where this is at for you. As far as other establishments, well, they will have Christine. Let yeah, I'm just telling you right now. Just let it. We could just not have this policy and then. You okay, well, have. let's thank okay, you. So that's nice. No, 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 I'm fighting listen. for everyone. I mean, that's all my that's all my take on it is I'm just. You know, I want everyone to be involved, I guess. All right. Next public comment, please. Anybody? All right. Very good. Any, no correspondence. I didn't see any correspondence. No, we might have a few things uh, for for Monday related to the to the park uh, yeah. across the street, but okay. uh, nothing uh, for this discussion today. All right, council comments, Ken. Holly, none at this time. Thank you, Mayor. Lauren, thank you. Russ, two questions. Thank you. Uh, one is the status on the historical marker communication for locations with um, the history center. Just want to get a status on that, and then status of the letter to the um, Corps of Engineers as well. So I know you had met with the township manager, interim manager, and just looking for, for an update, which I'm assuming we'll get Monday. Yeah. Sure, I'll be happy to Great. put that in my city manager report. Yeah, thanks. Great. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think as far as historical markers, we're, well, I think you and Mark had well, We did. Questions. We had some recommended alternatives for the ferry landing as well as for the one that was going to be in Cook Park. Or is, mm -hmm. So, and that was communicated, and I believe, if I recall correctly, the city manager was going to communicate that to Eric. Mm -hmm. So, just want to update that that message has been received, and mm -hmm. if there's any questions. Okay. okay. No comments. Bro. All right. Very good. I'm all set. All right. With that, um, motion to adjourn, please. Absolutely. Second. Thank you. All right. Madam, please call roll. Roll call. <clears throat> Yes. 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 All right. Thanks for joining.